Welcome to TCAT's Inside the Mind, where I break down in-game highlights, give tips and tricks on how to play better, as well as talk about what reads I'm making when I see the floor. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the power of the scoop layup. Let's watch the first clip. Ooh, sauce. Ooh, sauce. Ooh, got him and finished with a scoop. Let's talk about it. All right, so first thing I want to I want to impress this I want to press this point onto everyone. Scoop layups are a really powerful tool this year in NBA 2K23. And if you're the type of person that is a small guard or someone that doesn't necessarily dunk a lot, you should consider adding a scoop layup into your bag of finishes, especially if your layup is uh, in the high 80s or 90s. Um, so, okay, how did this work? Why did this work? Why is this an effective move? I think it's obvious I have some space right there. I created it with uh, the size up right here is Kyrie Irving drip, uh, signature style. That is a Damian Lillard behind the back right there. And then I'm, what I'm doing is I'm letting go of turbo, completely letting go of turbo. I'm pushing my left stick kind of up and to the right and I'm pushing my right stick directly to the right just so he can scoop and you see with the right hand, he's just gonna throw it up real quick. This is out of the Kyrie Irving layup package. Then boom, and that's a green too. So unless he blocks that shot, that's going in 100% of the time. And a very efficient shot. You know, a lot of space, boom, he's not fast enough to, to do anything about it. Let's go to the next clip. We got two part clips here. Boom, wow, look at that. What was that? That was coming down the court full speed, one Damian Lillard behind the back into a scoop. It's the same type of deal, right? If you create a little bit of space, um, you don't have to, like I finish, I finish the rim a lot of times through contact. This is one of those moments where you see how much space I have right here. Like this is this is pretty easy to initiate, uh, you know, anything out of this much space, right? And obviously, people, you can initiate a dunk out of this much space. A lot of people opt to make dunking builds, but you know, I want to make the point that uh, a layup build is underrated because you can make a layup build work really well with a build with high ball handling. Because when you upgrade your ball handling, automatically your uh, layups go up a little bit right and that's not the same with dunks your dunks don't go up with high ball handling your dunks don't go up with a high three ball your dunks don't go up with high speed or high acceleration or high stamina or high strength they go up with vertical right but if you're making your player to be a, a heavily offensive player you know what i mean it might make sense to make him a, a layup player instead of a dunker all right so damian lillard behind the back what am i holding what am i pressing the left stick is going up and to the left right here. That's pulling my player up and to the left to finish on the left side of the basket. The right stick is going directly to the left. And you can see scoop, it's green. And the only way he gets that is if he blocks it. It's the only way. He can get 100% contest if it's green, it's still going in. Only way to stop it is if he blocks it. Let's look at another one. Ooh, sauce. And that's a fun one because that's a very particular type of scoop. That scoop is a little different than the other ones. Let's watch it again. So little baby Kyrie signature size up into a wide scoop across the across the lane here. So this was a Steph Curry hop back, right? One behind the back, and that behind the back is out of the uh, Kyrie Irving size up, right? So one quick behind the back, we're gonna launch. This is a speed boost. The blow bomb, he takes a bad angle, the defender. He's not having any help side come. You can see Green thought about it. You can see the other dude, he has, you know, a couple feet inside the arc. He's thinking about it, but neither, none of, no one's gonna come to help this guy. He's on an island. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling the left stick far to the right, like up into the right, but kind of more right this time to come further across the lane because I really want to get to that right side of the basket and I'm running all the way across the middle from the, the left side almost even left corner, like left wing area. And I'm just trying to get this wide shot. And with the right stick, again, I'm just holding, I'm letting go of turbo, that's important. Right as I'm about to get to the basket, I'm letting go of turbo and I'm holding my right stick to the right. 
boom. That's a green. Again, only way he gets that is if he's blocking it. And most likely a guy at that height doesn't have block. Look how tall he is, right? Like if anyone's gonna block that shot, it was either gonna be green hair, Boston Celtics looking dude, or it was gonna be a shirtless dude. One of those dudes, cause they're bigger. This dude definitely doesn't have any block. Scoop layups are great are great for people that don't have high block ratings or people who don't jump and I'm um, and I want to make this point clear that this is a park gameplay two park gameplays and a rec gameplay if you're the type of person that plays park scoop layup is going to be great for you all the time because running into people with high block ratings that's that's here and there you're going to run into those swing builds those six eight six nine builds that, that might have a high block and chase down rating or, or chase down badges you know what I mean uh, to be able to get those, you watch out for those guys, right? You size them up, you kind of you kind of get a feel for how fast they're going, how much they jump. In Wrecker Pro-Am, you know, the people that are going to jump are going to be those centers, right? If they run the 2-3 zone or they run a zone where the center can just kind of sit in the paint and try to guard everything. In those situations, you have to analyze, is that center a jumper? And even more so, is he going to jump at you, the small guard? running around or whatever size guard you are practicing your layup package because you can do scoop layups on a bigger guard so you don't have to be small to do scoop layups just to be clear uh, you have to be small to get the Kyrie Irving layup package but you can scoop out of any layup package you just uh, you know they got they got good scoops out of a lot of different layup packages okay three different clips of scoop layups let's finish this up with maybe some some different types of layups here let me see let me see nope that wasn't that wasn't it. Let me see. What's this one? No. What's this one right here? Uh, that's a fun one, but no, nah, I don't want to go over that one, actually. Hey! We'll talk, we'll talk about that one real quick. So, all I'm doing, this is kind of like, this is a fast break. I didn't record the whole break, but, you know. Assume, you know, we got the ball back on the break. Uh... I'm beating my dude to the corner, and I might have a fade right here, but it looks like he's, number 11 is kind of stepping out a little bit on me, the defender on me, so I'm gonna just kind of naturally take that inside, and I have clamp breaker on gold, so at this angle that he's taking right now, I know he's not gonna be able to cut me off, and so now I'm just trying to bump him a little bit, like hold the baseline, not go out of bounds, just using every, every last inch I have on that baseline. And the great, the reason I use Kyrie Irving's layup package is actually for the reverse layups. The reverse layups are the best out of Kyrie Irving's layup package. And if you've never watched any of my other videos, here's an important disclaimer. Reverse layups out of any layup package. Do not go in, even if they're wide open. I'm gonna say it again for you. You could have Hall of Fame Acrobat, Hall of Fame Giant Slayer, Hall of Fame Relentless fin Fearless Finisher, whatever. They're not gonna go in, even if you're wide open, nine out of 10 times, like one out of 10 times will go in and make you feel good. Nine out of 10 times, reverse layups do not go in unless you jelly out of them. So what am I gonna do right there? That's a jelly. You see how he brought his hand down and back up? I did that, that's manual. How did I do that? I start by holding my right stick. At this point, it would be to the left because that's where my body is on the baseline to be able to reverse it. So I'm holding it to the left to get the reverse right about here, right? You can see this is still a regular reverse layup, even has a chance to block this shot right here. You see uh, the 2K shoes dude jumping at it. That's why I'm gonna bring it down like this. You see, I brought it down now. So now I dodged the block. He had a chance to block it. I dodged it by bringing it down. That's what the right stick I brought it down with. So if I was holding the, the right stick to the left to start the reverse, I swung the right stick down into the right. And then right about here, before he lands, because now I've completely dodged the block. This guy's now coming down out of the air. He doesn't have a chance to block it anymore. I'm gonna flick the right stick back up. Uh, yeah, back up, basically. From down is the right, to so back up to flip it up. Boom, he flips it up, finish it, right reverse lay. Hard to block, gets you a lot of space uh, going against the baseline. Let me see if there's another clip. Uh... That's an ankle breaker, that's cool. That's switching it to the other hand. Da, da, da. That's a cool one. That's not on today's lesson though. I want another reverse layup, hold on. 
Is this the floater? This is the floater. That's a really cool one too. And that's just that's just clamp breaker and then throwing up a floater. That, I don't think that's anything too special. Like I think most people can figure out how to get that floater up. Hold on. Where is? I had a really cool reverse. I think it might be this one. Yeah, I think it's this one right here. So you see, I'm sizing up the defender. I'm sizing him up. I actually told the dude, don't screen, don't screen, get off. You know, I think I was playing with randoms. That's why there's like, you know, some of the people on my team quit, some of the people on their team quit. That's why there only ends up being like six people in here. I that's one of my favorite layups all year. So, okay, how did I do it? Let's talk about it. You see, I give him a bunch of jab steps to come to the uh, the inside as opposed to the baseline. Give him a bunch of jab steps to the inside and my screener is setting a screen to the inside. Even though I reject the screen, you see right here, it still looks like he might set a screen. This guy is trying to play for the screen too much and so I spin baseline. Right when I spin baseline, so number seven is cooked. I mean, there's two number sevens, but the one that was guarding me is cooked. And now both of these dudes are gonna come off and try to stop me from getting to the basket. And there's no help side coming on the reverse side of the basket. So the, the choice is obvious. I wanna reverse it because I wanna use uh, the rim to protect the ball, just like you would in real life. So this is a reverse layup, but here's the key thing. Right here, you can see I'm pulling it down and then flicking it back up to give myself an extra second on the reverse. Again, all I'm doing is I'm giving myself one extra second on the reverse. See, I, I uh, spin baseline here, boom. And then right here, they're jumping. So right when they jump, ah, now I pulled it down because they jumped. So now I'm protecting the ball. And then I'm flipping it back up right before I land on the opposite side of the basket. That's two points. Should have been a foul. Uh, again, the idea is with scoop layups, right? And this is what I wanna, this is what I wanna, you know, impress upon today. Today's lesson of going into the bag of layups. If you wanna go fast, you wanna go before the defense is ready, before the defense sets up. A scoop layup is your best friend. If you got a fast player, maybe not a tall player, maybe not someone who can dunk on somebody, maybe not someone who can put someone on the ground, but somebody who can get there before the defense is mentally prepared to guard that player, or shifty enough to get there before the defense is ready to guard that player. Scoop layups are your best friend, a bunch of scoop layups, and then when they start jumping, you can get into a series of reverses or jelly layups that will protect the ball, shield the ball, and protect it basically all the way through the jump so you can get to the other side of the basket and be able to you know, finish effectively. That is today's lesson, the scoop and the reverse, two moves that people don't use enough in their bag. Most uh, 2K players, most content creators, you don't see doing a whole lot of scoop layups or a whole lot of reverse layups. They just don't. I don't know why. They're very good, very effective tools. Uh, with that being said, thank y'all for watching. Please like, share, comment on the video. Comment what you want to see in the next video, man. This is TCAS Inside the Mind. I can do whatever the hell I want here. You know, if you guys, there's a particular move or, or style or something you want me to break down a little more in depth, uh, comment down below and I'll try to do that in these videos. Um, again, thank y'all for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.